news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the People's Channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. From the world headquarters of GB News, this is Friday Night Live with me, Mark Dolan, and this week, I'm fully dressed. The weekend starts here, so bring your own drinks. The admission is free. On tonight's show, in my Friday feeling monologue, I'll be explaining why Labour are wrong about literally everything. Plus, as the woke Navy employs sailors who can't swim, will diversity bring down the West as we know it? Liz Truss writes a book. And is it time to bring back the British Empire? We are not pulling our punches tonight. To fall out over all of those topics and many more are my Friday A-team. A woman so Brexity, she makes Nigel Farage look like a Remainer, Suzanne Evans. Cancelled by the BBC for having a personality, radio legend Alex Dyke. And Britain's bendiest man, legendary dancer <laughs> Wayne Sleep. <laughs> My Friday feeling monologue is coming. I'll be dealing with Labour and I'll be proving why they're wrong about everything. But first, the news headlines and Tatiana Sanchez, who's always right. Mark, thank you and good evening. The top stories. Angela Rayner says she'll step down if it's determined that she's committed a criminal offence over her tax affairs. It's over the sale of her council house in Stockport a decade ago. Questions have been asked about whether she paid the right amount of tax and if it was her main home. In a statement, Angela Rayner said the questions raised relate to a time before she was an MP and that she's taken expert tax and legal advice. Sir Keir Starmer says Labour welcomes the investigation. We welcome this investigation because it will allow a line to be drawn in relation to this matter. Um, I am fully confident that Andrew Rayner has not broken the rules. She will cooperate with the investigation as you would expect, uh, and it's really a matter for the police. The former chief executive of Royal Mail says he doesn't know if money paid by sub postmasters who were wrongly accused of stealing was recorded as profit. Adam Crozier told the Horizon Inquiry this afternoon that he assumed the money was accounted for by the company's financial team, but he admitted that he couldn't be sure. He also said he was not aware that lawyers within the Royal Mail Group conducted prosecutions and conceded that sub-postmasters should not have been treated as thieves. Energy Minister Graham Stewart has announced he's standing down from his Cabinet role to focus on local issues. The Beverley and Holderness MP that he plans to focus on issues such as making roads safer, broadband delivery and increasing the number of defibrillators in his constituency. Justin Tomlinson now takes on the role of Minister for Energy Security and Net Zero. A 23-year-old man has denied murdering a good Samaritan who died as he tried to help a stranger. 46-year-old Chris Marriott was on a post-Christmas walk with his wife and two young children when he stopped to help a woman who was unconscious in the street. He was killed when a car ploughed into a small crowd following a disturbance in the Burngreave area of Sheffield. Hassan Janga denied the murder and manslaughter of Mr Marriott but pleaded guilty to causing his death by dangerous driving. And some breaking news to us in the last few minutes. Legendary Italian fashion designer Roberto Cavalli has died at the age of 83. Italian news agency ANSA reported he died at home in Florence after a long illness. 
The fashion guru founded the company in 1975, quickly becoming known for his animal print designs. For the latest stories, you can sign up to GB News Alerts by scanning the QR code on your screen or go to gbnews.com slash alerts. Now it's back to Mark. A funereal atmosphere at Reform UK headquarters this week as my good friend and Reform UK leader Richard Tice apologised after sacking an inactive candidate who turned out to be dead. I'll be honest, the political establishment are so useless these days, on the left and the right, I'm wondering whether a dead candidate might do a better job. Now, Reform UK have run urgent medical checks on all of their other candidates, blood pressure, pulse, breathing, and they are all found to be alive and well. For example, the prospective parliamentary candidate for Eastbourne is the very talented Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> who famously ended slavery and won the US Civil War. And now the big man wants to bring down taxes and end wokery in our institutions. Running in Shipley, Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, stopped people in their tracks with his incredible music, and now Elvis is going to stop the boats. <laughs> the candidate for South Devon is one John Lennon, who's going to axe net zero. He wants to give gas a chance. And last but not least, Jesus Christ running in Bradford West. Finally, a politician that walks on water. Although Nigel Farage and Jesus in one party, that's two big personalities. How will that work? Uh -huh. <laughs> now, competition for the Friday Night Live Wrong About Everything Award is always hotly contested. But this week, it surely goes to the Labour Party, who just a few weeks ago tweeted their support for trans madness. This was a tweet read by 8.8 .8 million people, but with just 4,500 likes. In social media terms, that's what they call death by ratio. The Labour leader, Starmer, has notoriously tied himself in knots, struggling to define what a woman is, even though he's married to one. And under fire, Angela Rayner, who identifies as a ginger woman always in trouble, said anyone expressing concerns about children being transitioned is guilty of hate speech. Well, since the devastating CAS review, which says that the NHS has damaged children physically and psychologically by transitioning them, we've had a disingenuous, vomit-inducing change of tone from the likes of Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper, who had the brass neck to say that lessons must be learned. What? In the Labour Party? And Wes Streeting, who expressed regret over saying the following sentence. He said, all trans women are women. Get over it. But Labour's deep ability to be on the wrong side of every story goes beyond trans madness. Wrong on lockdowns, of which they wanted more. Wrong on masking, which was about as useful as a sweatband on Prince Andrew. <laughs> Wrong on school closures, <laughs> which Starmer said were inevitable. Wrong on taking the knee to BLM, which proved to be a corrupt, divisive neo-Marxist organisation that makes Hamas look quite sweet. Wrong on Brexit, as Starmer tried to reverse it. Wrong on energy, as they bet the house on flaky renewables. Wrong on Jeremy Corbyn, who Starmer wanted to be PM. The list goes on. In fact, Labour are so wrong about everything, I wouldn't be surprised if Starmer was behind the all-female reboot of Ghostbusters, I blame him, <laughs> and James Blunt's difficult second album. Oh. Tickets have just gone on sale for Glastonbury this week, and demand is, as ever, very high. But don't worry, with old political Nostradamus Sir Keir Starmer in charge for five years, by 2029, we'll all be living in a field unwashed, sleeping in tents, relieving ourselves behind a bush and waiting for our dealer to arrive with a family pack of ketamine just to dull the pain. <laughs> Nostradamus Keir Starmer in charge for five years. Just imagine. Can you imagine it? Now, the Tories are terrible, don't get me wrong, but replacing them with Starmer's Labour is a bit like replacing your rubbish boyfriend with someone even worse <laughs> that you found on Tinder, someone <laughs> with tattoos a motorbike, and still living with his mother. <laughs> Swipe left at the next election at your peril. I might go celibate. Oh. <laughs> mm. 
Reacting to my profound words of wisdom tonight, my Friday A-team, Suzanne Evans, Alex Dyke and Wayne Sleep. OK, Suzanne, mm. Labour, wrong about everything. Well, Prove pretty, me wrong. pretty much wrong about everything. But I think what worries me too is that the Tories seem to be copying Labour in everything they're doing at the moment. So Labour are now having to change their policies because the Tories are nicking their policies. So Labour are having to think up new ones. So, for instance, the non-DOM thing. Mm. There they were. They were going to basically tax all the non-DOMs to death. Uh, so that they could fund the NHS. And lo and behold, Communist Jeremy Hunt comes out of the woodwork and does exactly the same thing. So, uh, like you say, it is one of the... I mean, I have to say, I've no experience of Tinder and looking for boyfriends on Tinder, so I, I can't do about that I one, I think Mark. you protest too but much. No, honestly, don't. Uh, but, but... I, I, I've, just, I've just been online. I've just met someone <laughs> called Susie Evans 69. Oh, <laughs> oh God. 69? I'm not ringer. that old. How dare you? <laughs> 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 yeah, but no, it's, uh, it, it is... People, a lot of people say to me, it can't be worse. Labour can't can't be worse than this. And I say, well, yes, they can, because, of course, any party can be worse than the incumbent government. Um, we didn't think that the Conservatives could be worse than Tony Blair, but look what's happened. In Indeed. power since 2010, it's been an utter disaster. Alex Dyke, I'm howling into the abyss, because the bottom line is that Labour are streets ahead of the Tories in the polls. The British people have had enough of this Tory government. They want rubbish Keir Starmer. I don't think they do, and you can never believe the polls. You've got to wait until mm. voting night. I mean... The only poll that matters. The only poll that matters, yeah. Mm. I, I, and I'm so, uh, so pleased that you went easy on Labour tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm handling them with kid gloves. But listen, this is a minority view, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we way... all need change, though, I think. Mm. And I think it doesn't matter if it was Labour, Liberal, whatever you call it. Um, we need change. Yeah. Because with change, at least something different may happen. Mm. We know what's going to happen. Conservatives are all going to shake hands. They start networking when they're at Eton at eight years old and they just keep it in the family more or less, and uh, I don't know if they know that we exist half the time. Do you think it would be, in a way, healthy for the democracy, healthy for the yes. country, just to have a Labour government? Just to, change, so we can... to make change, so we can get at them instead. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you like Keir Starmer? I mean, have you, um, ever, no. have you seen him dance? Can Keir Starmer dance? <laughs> oh, I think he could probably do a little Greek number for you any day. You yeah, know. he dances around issues, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, does, yes. It feels like 1997 all over again. We had he bends the rules. I was going to say that yeah. there, there <laughs> were a lot of Tories that were, were very excited when mm. Tony Blair got in with New Labour. Yeah. Because it seemed to suit a lot of different voters from different parties. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the question, Alex Dyke. Uh, producer Greg mentions this earlier. Mm. Uh, are the Labour Party now right wing? Well, they could uh. be. And I was thinking of your very own Nigel Farage. There's a guy who could just about lead any party, in my opinion. Yeah, he just fits into any suit with any different coloured yeah. rosette on it. Horses <laughs> for courses. Mm. There you go. Uh, Nigel Farage to save the Labour Party. Wayne Sleep, what a thought. Um, I'm salivating. I think it could, yes. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> But that was the whole point. The political spectrum has changed, Suzanne Evans, hasn't yeah, it? Absolutely. Left versus right is mm. is an arcane metric that doesn't speak for the normal British people. Now. No, I mean, one of Nigel Farage's famous statements is you can't get a cigarette paper between Conservative and Labour. Yeah. And as I say, you look at the policies now, how, how you know, we're living in a high state, mm. high tax, uh, high regulation mm. society, mm. and neither party is prepared to tackle that. The only person that was was Liz Truss, and I think we're going to be talking about her later on. We are. But, um, but you know, she absolutely tried to change, but she was up against the whole of the establishment. Yeah. They crushed her very quickly. And so it didn't happen. I think Britain would be in a much better place if she was still Prime Minister. Well, we're going to be talking about Liz Truss later for longer than she was Prime Minister, which is going <laughs> some. <laughs> show is an hour. But, um, Suzanne, I wonder whether I've been a bit hard on Sir Keir Starmer, OK? This is a guy that has rid his party uh, the, the, the awful reputation of anti-Semitism. He's got rid of the mad Corbynites. He's made Labour electable. Um, mm. They're prudent. No, He's going to press the new clear button to keep us safe. He's going to be a great Prime Minister. Well, I have to say, I was impressed by what he said on defence, but no, I don't think he's rescued the Labour Party. I think what's happened is the Conservatives have destroyed their own party. This election yeah. isn't going to be about who wins, it's going to be about who loses, actually. And I think so many Tory voters are so disillusioned, they're not going to vote Conservative, they'll either stay at home or they'll have a punt on Labour. I don't think Keir Starmer is actually winning this election. The Tories are losing it. Alex Dyke, you offered a tantalising view a moment ago, you said the polls cannot be believed. I did. So, do you think that there could be a hung parliament? Could the Tories even win by a handful of seats? Is, is, is anything possible? I've got a feeling the Tories are going to pull it off. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Right, and what do you think will be the factor behind that? 
What would motivate people to just go, do you know what, five years? Because I just years. think people are, uh, people are creatures of habit. And it's kind of the bed of the devil, you know. And, and, and mm. Keir Starmer has done some good, but I just don't think he looks like a leader to many people. I think the Angela Raymer thing's been really bad for him. You know, coming out in mm. favour... In, 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 uh, in support of her, when this was a guy who headed the Crown Prosecution Service. Now, yeah. of course, she's not been charged with anything, she's being investigated, we don't know whether she's innocent or guilty, and we give her absolutely the benefit of the doubt. But for him to go on with this whataboutery, oh, don't talk to me about that, talk to me about NHS waiting list, I'm sorry, you want to be Prime Minister, you were the former head of the CPS, not a good look. And, of course, Angela Rayner denies all allegations, denies all wrongdoing, says she has legal advice uh, confirming that uh, she has acted with propriety. Oddly, Sir Keir Starmer has said that he has no desire to see that legal advice. That's unusual because he's a lawyer. Um, <laughs> briefly, lovely, fabulous Wayne Sleep. No, I mean, uh, what, I... what do you think about this... this dead Reform UK candidate. Oh, the well... The best Prime Minister we never had. Yeah, I mean, incredible, isn't it, really? <laughs> I mean, I'm just becoming a member of a new club. They don't think I'm dead already. Hi, I'm alive. <laughs> but um, I did hear this awful story that somebody died at their own funeral once. Oh, no. Yes, down in Bolivia somewhere. The coffin was open and she was dead. And um, at oh. the ceremony, everybody was in black at the funeral and she suddenly sat up and saw them all in black and died of a heart attack. <gasps> I did interview someone who died, actually, and came back to life on the slab in the mortuary. Are you serious? No, yeah, I'm absolutely serious. I interviewed him many, many years ago. He probably no. is dead All now. these ghoulish yes. stories. Yes. Uh, mm. Alex... Live from boredom from your interview, didn't they? <laughs> no. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Alex, it, it does say something <laughs> that a Reform UK candidate who's dead is more popular than the Tories and Labour. What does that say about our current... <laughs> yeah, but that, I, 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 and it's a great story. It's a, it, 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 it sounds quite funny, but it must have been awful for the family true. involved. Yeah, very true. And it must have been awful for the party, cos nobody would do that, would they? No. Nobody would do that on purpose. You raise a very, very good yeah. point. And, uh, well, I, came up, with, I came up with an idea for a new reality show. Why miss your own funeral? <laughs> you, know, you could lie in the bed, you know, you could That's feel the satin. That's a idea. Try it on. Yeah. See that you're, you know, what they write in the papers is all rubbish. Another you friend know. of mine made her own coffin, if you want another ghoulish story. Is that right? Yes, oh, did yes. they? Yes. You've what, got what, funny save money or something? What happened? <laughs> no, she actually wrote an article about it for the, for the Telegraph, and she and her mother mm. both made their own wicker coffins. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think the Labour government's going to be that bad, but never yeah, say wouldn't never. Wouldn't run to it. <laughs> uh, listen, fantastic stuff. Next up, as the woke Navy employs sailors who can't swim, will diversity bring down the West as we know it? Plus, Liz Truss writes a book. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> GB News Breakfast, every day from 6am. TfL bosses have come under fire after banning an advert... Oh, God. <laughs> they banned an advert for a comedy show because it had a hot dog on it, because that supposedly promotes obesity. The comedian Ed Gamble has swapped the image of the fast food favourite in favour of a cucumber instead. And there's the cucumber on the plate. So, is the UK turning into a nanny state? Let's talk to former presenter of Fat Families, Steve Miller, and nutritionist Olivia Parry. Good to see you both this morning. Olivia, it's a comedy show. Um, he's not promoting eating hot dogs, is he? Is this just a load of nonsense? The thing is, we have a huge problem with overweight and obesity in this country. We're fourth in Europe. Um, it's big business. Advertising for food companies is big business. They make, you know, they make so much money. You just have to switch on primetime TV to watch, you know, food after food advertisements. And we, it, it's for the youngsters as well who don't have the nutritional education. We're not taught cookery in school anymore. People go to go to college and to university. They don't know how to cook. But and it leads forgive me, to forgive me for jumping in, Olivia. Next. Forgive me for jumping in. But the, but the, the whole point with this is it's an advert for a comedy show. Yes, I know. But this is a this is a wider issue. I think it's a load of old tosh. To be quite honest with you. It's a hot dog. In fact, I wish they'd have put onions on the hot dog. A bit of what you fancy won't hurt you. You should eat 80-20 anyway. You know, we talk about a nanny state. I actually think, arguably, we're becoming an authoritarian state. Opinions banned. Comedy banned. The England flag banned. It's like we've got to wear a virtual muzzle. I'm Andrew Doyle. 
Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And why it matters to you. From your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. Good afternoon, Britain. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. The Lettuce Returns. It is the public in publishing, I should say, sensation of the year. Liz Truss has written an autobiography about her 57 minutes in power. Mm. An exclusive excerpt of the book suggests that she blames Boris Johnson's dog for an outbreak of uh, fleas in number 10, which had her itching. Now, I don't know, Boris is pretty hairy himself and he gets around. So, will this new book make us realise that Liz Truss is the best prime minister we sort of never had? Reacting... Suzanne Evans, Alex Dyke and Wayne Sleep. Do you think, Wayne Sleep, that Liz Truss should have been given more than 44 days? Yeah, I do, actually, mm. quite frankly. I think she uh, had a brain about her and we were desperate for somebody. Mm. We were desperate for change. When she came in, she started quite well and then it all went gobbledygook and she just went under. She sunk, basically, yeah. when she needed support around her. But a lot of these women, you know, they get their ideas and they don't discuss them with anybody else. Else. That happened to our former Prime Minister Warren. Which, and, which one? Oh, I don't know. The one after I've lost Margaret count. Thatcher, the one who took over. She was, you know, she. she Theresa May. Uh, yeah, the Theresa May. Oh, to yeah. me, Theresa May is going away, and it's us little that have to pay. Yeah, no, God, blimey, I think you raised a fair point. Yes. Um, do you think that Liz Truss's premiership was like one of those West End shows that just needs mm. a bit of time to get going? Yes, that's right. Well, it needed mm. more time. Well, like the first series of Only Fools and Horses. There you go. There you are, the yes. BBC stuck with it and then it became a hit. Yes, yes. exactly. Black had the same thing. I mm. think the first series mm. was a dog. But Theresa May apparently um, did all her speeches and she didn't even tell her own party what she was going to say. They yeah. had to sit there and wait like the general public to see what was going to come out of her mouth. Well, that's no <laughs> way to run a company. No, I do government. agree. I mean, I always think that uh, prime ministers are imperiled when they don't communicate with their cabinet. Yeah, but I don't, yes. I don't think that's the case with Liz Truss at all. I mean, she said exactly what she was going to do in her mm. Conservative leadership campaign. All the Conservative Party members voted for her. They didn't mm. want Rishi Sunak. And I think that's another reason why the Conservatives are absolutely plummeting in the poll now, because they mm. think he staged a bit of a coup yes. really, against her. Um, she said exactly what she was going to do, She uh, mm. and she put it into action. She talked to her Cabinet, you know, she and Kwasi Kwarteng didn't just suddenly decide the budget on the day. It was all discussed. There were sound yeah. economic principles behind it. I think the interesting thing, and she says this in her book, actually, she talks very movingly about when she met the Queen at Balmoral when she became Prime Minister. And she said, the Queen gave me two words of advice, you know, <laughs> pace yourself. And she said, I think perhaps I should have listened. And I think she's really got to the nub of the matter here. She was desperate to just change the country and make it better and do everything. And everybody went, ah, like rabbits in startled headlights. And I think had she paced herself and yeah. done a little bit slowly, then I think... Mm. She might, in the long term, have, have stayed on. Well, I think you're right. It's, it's a warning to all politicians. Don't say you're going to do stuff and then do them. That is really <laughs> wrong. Good wrong. Point. It's Good inappropriate. Point. No, exactly. get you the sack. Um, <laughs> what you've got to do is just annoy everyone and hang on to power at number 10. Uh, Liz Truss, best prime minister we never had, Alex Dyke. I honestly don't know. But I do know that flea powder <laughs> works in 24 hours. So she had, what, 43 days to enjoy uh, uh, number yeah, 10. Yeah, but there was a shaggy dog in number 10 for a couple of years, and was that takes shaggy? a lot of shifting. Was he shaggy? I'm talking though? about Dylan, talking... the dog. Oh, oh Dylan, right, not Boris. I'm not going to, <laughs> not going to libel. <laughs> uh, I really don't know. Of the world. I mean, the thing about Liz Truss is she didn't even have enough time mm. 
to kind of indicate that she was going to be great, really, did she? Mm. I mean, it's all about the first 100 days. She didn't even get half of those. All right, yeah. what about the Tories bring her back? All is forgiven. Yeah, I Could would imagine. In, in a, in a final should... crazy roll of the dice, Alex Dyke, bring yeah. back Liz Truss. What done? do you think? I have a great-great-grandfather who was Prime Minister twice in Australia. So they right? brought him back. Uh, William Morris Hughes, yes. Oh, my goodness. Harold and, Wilson. Um, check. Harold Wilson. What about no, Boris Johnson? Possible. Yeah. Will they bring him back? Mm. Well, Bojo. Well, Bojo, interesting you should say that because Boris Johnson has not ruled out a return to frontline politics. Right. Could he become Prime Minister again at some point? I think so. Wayne Sleep, you think yeah, so? I think he He's might. got the X factor, hasn't he? Oh, yeah, he's got the nerve. Yeah. <laughs> but would people trust him after everything we went through with COVID? Mm. People forget very quickly in this country. They do. I'm I do. Sure. I tell you one thing I, I thought we discussed Keir Starmer earlier, right? Starmer's in power for five years. The, the idea of Boris Johnson coming back will just be stardust for people, won't it? Don't yeah. you think? It, it will. Um, I, I don't think he was the greatest prime minister. I think of the COVID issue, I think he could Correct. have handled it completely differently. Shouldn't have locked down. But if there's one person that they're frightened of, Labour, it's Boris, because they know he's got that personality. He's a people person. He's got that charisma. He is waiting in the wings. Uh, it is time now for the No Sugar Sherlock Award. An influential research by office management company McKinsey mm -hmm. has found that diversity does not improve financial performance. In other news, the sun rises in the east. There are 24 hours in a day. <laughs> and Liverpool manager uh -huh. Jurgen Klopp spends too much time at the dentist. <laughs> Widely quoted studies have suggested that increased diversity boosted profits, but perhaps just for once, we can let the facts get in the way of a good story, with the authors of this new report saying there's no evidence of a diversity bounce. Crumbs, it's almost like appointments made should be colourblind, not related to your ethnicity, sexual preference or gender, but your ability to do the job. I know, it's a crazy idea. It's Friday. We've all had a drink. As China tools up its younger generation with an education system based around science, languages, engineering and mathematics, and with the Chinese version of TikTok showing Chinese kids intelligent, constructive educational videos, the West has decided to conduct a war on merits in the boardroom and the classroom, with businesses risking having less good employees to tick boxes and kids spending their free time doom-scrolling on social media watching videos of a man slicing cake oh. and women being pushed into legs. Although I must admit that is quite entertaining. <laughs> so here we have documentary proof that box-ticking diversity policies don't boost businesses, are divisive, anti-merit, anti-talent and anti-hard work. And they bring with them a prejudice of their own for people with the wrong skin colour. Who knew? Now, in the boardroom, who cares? These companies will just lose money. But do you want your heart surgeon or airline pilot chosen not on merit, but ethnicity, who they like shagging, or what gender they think they are today? Mm. But mark my words, these woke policies will not change in the face of the facts. It's a crazy ideology which has taken root. The fall of the West cannot come quickly enough. Bring popcorn. Alex Dyke, I think we're bringing this on ourselves. I think that China will eventually take over, and I don't mind because I quite like Chinese food. <laughs> well, Warren Buffett, who's one of the richest men in the world, said that... And my favourite country singer, I should add. <laughs> said... <laughs> what, what a life he's had. Yeah. <laughs> said that this was ridiculous uh, some years ago, and he's got a lot more experience than me. We want the best pilots, the best heart surgeons, we want the best people for the jobs. I don't care what colour they are, what religion they are, what sex they are, just give me the best person for the job. And, Alex, they will likely be people of colour, because the whole point is that talent is spread evenly throughout the human race. Yeah. And we will have diversity, but what you don't have to have is patronising, box-ticking. That's the difference. You want a diverse... Uh, work environment, but based on merits. Exactly. That's common sense, mm. isn't That's it? Exactly I mean, what was the Beeb be. like when you were there? Because the Beeb are pretty keen on these policies, aren't they? I know you don't like to be too harsh on your former employers, but... Yeah, well, they... It, it, it was about box ticking. Mm. It was about box ticking. And I felt as a... Um, believe it or not, I'm over 50. I felt as a... a white, the lighting, don't be fooled. A, as a, <laughs> a white, middle-class 
straight guy, mm. I was on a I, I felt I was on a hit list. Didn't take whether any boxes. I, mm. No, whether I was or not, I don't know. Well, you tick a lot of boxes here, let me tell you. Thank um, you very much. You are you are <laughs> fast tracked to notice, and I'm only kidding. Uh, yeah. Wayne Sleep, uh, you come from the world of entertainment. Yes. And and talent is colourblind. Of course it is. And um, quite frankly, I had my hip replacement done by somebody who became a woman and he was a man and um, he did princess uh, he did the queen mothers one of her he assisted at and then he was called william i think and then he she said to him what do i call you now he said sarah ma'am and so he said sarah do the other hip the other woman's <laughs> assistant, and didn't turn a blind eye just wanted the best person the best person to yeah. do it correct and that was me and i've had a wonderful success with my hip as well mm. and so i don't care if they're black white green yellow or blue so long as they can do the job and if they can do the job, they get first prize. However, Suzanne, maybe what these companies are trying to do, these organisations, is balance out a huge discrepancy. We know that the boardroom is dominated by white, middle-aged men. Is that a problem? All they're trying to do is make the world more equal. Well, that, that's right. But, um, you know, ultimately, you look at the big listed companies, they, their bottom line is about profit for their shareholders. Yeah. And that's what they've got to do. And you look at, I mean, it's not a listed company, but you look at, like, John Lewis is the big issue at the moment, mm. isn't it, with their chairman, Sharon White, who had no retail experience, had just had a hit career in the civil service. She's black. Um, she ticked a box. She, I'm sorry, but she failed in her job because she hadn't got the right background and experience. Do you think that she was hired for her box ticking? Because she has I, had a stellar career, she, hasn't she? I don't she's know a how very, she was hired. She's a very was, accomplished woman. She was very successful in her previous job, but mm. as I said, she'd got no retail experience. Why mm. on earth would you choose to head up a company like John Lewis, somebody that hadn't got a background in retail? So the interesting thing, though, about this study is, you know, this idea that if you had more diverse people in, in the boardroom, it was a McKinsey study, big consultancy, and uh, it's, it's just... Absolutely been taken as gospel. Yeah. The interesting thing is, this new research, McKinsey wouldn't share how they got to their conclusions with this, the, the two professors who did the new research. Now, that, to me, rings a great big alarm bell. If you're mm. confident in your research, why wouldn't you tell them which companies you studied? So these guys just went to the S&P 500, mm. America's 500 biggest listed companies, and obviously got very different results. But what, isn't, it, yeah. isn't it the... the... Uh, on the board, the white fat cats, the white middle-aged fat cats that are making sure boxes are ticked below them. Very true. You, you don't mm. see, it, you know, let, let's They're be fair. They're pulling up the ladder, aren't they? Exactly. Well, after they get to the top. Exactly, that's what I think. Mm. And diversity should go all the way up to the top. Bingo, well said, you are so right. Uh, listen, next up, folks, should we bring back the British Empire? I'll be making the case. Bear with me on this one. I am sober. Also, because <laughs> the country is flooded with fake stamps, should we ban them? Is it time to get rid of the Royal Mail? We'll discuss that too. Lots to get through. See you in two. Good evening. Here's your latest GB News weather update from the Met Office. Showers for many of us this weekend, but towards the southeast, something a little bit drier, and that's because we have high pressure dominating over the near continent. Further north, though, a frontal system is pushing its way through, and that's going to bring some further outbreaks of rain across some parts of Scotland into northern England as we go through the night. Also, some strong gusty winds and a few showers towards the northwest of Scotland, but elsewhere largely dry as we go through the early hours of Saturday morning and some clear skies, but despite these temperatures not dropping a huge amount. A touch cooler than last night, but a relatively mild start on Saturday nonetheless. First thing, there could be some murkiness, some low cloud perhaps around English Channel coastal parts, but otherwise, particularly towards the southeast, it's going to be a largely fine day. Decent amount of sunshine, a bit more cloud and some rain across northern and western parts of England and Wales. Nothing heavy here. The heaviest downpours likely across parts of Scotland could be some gusty winds here too. Temperatures will be down a nudge compared to today, but still a little bit above average for the time of year. Into Sunday, and it is going to be a fresher day for all of us. There will be plenty of showers piling in across parts of Northern Ireland and particularly Scotland. Some heavy, some thundery, could be some hail mixed in. Further south and east across the bulk of England and Wales, it's actually looking like a largely dry day with some decent sunshine. More showers to come as we go through Monday and to Tuesday, but it is going to be noticeably fresher than it has been of late. Bye-bye. 
GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other, which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubry, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria DiPiero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister. And we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. Now, Britain has been flooded with thousands of fake stamps uh, which are being blamed on China. Anyone who receives a letter with a fake stamp is charged five quid by the Royal Mail. Just how much do you really want that birthday card from your gran? Uh, what is the point in stamps? What's the cost of a first-class stamp these days? 150 quid? 200 quid? Who knows? Should we axe them all together and disband the Royal Mail? Suzanne. No, of course we can't do that. Um, I was going to say it's got the Queen's head on it, but of course it's the King's head now. I still exactly. You're, yours are out of date. Still haven't <laughs> caught up. It's still strange. I, people talk about the Queen. She came to Shropshire where I lived the other day and I thought immediately thought, of course it's Camilla. I think I'm still trying to catch up. But no, you yeah. can't. Sorry, I'm waffling. You're, you're, like, you no, no, the queen, you're like the Queen's coming. You're like what? Like a reformed UK <laughs> candidate? <laughs> That's right. From Comes the ashes. From yeah. the dead, bless her. Oh, she was no. wonderful. Um, no, you can't. But this is quite a story, this. Yeah. The mm. Daily Telegraph Telegraph uncovered these thousands of fake stamps and they went to, they found four companies in China mm. that were prepared to make a million of them a week and they were selling them for 4p each. Which, which is, is, by the way, incredible. how much they should cost. Well, so it would be a lot the, What is the first class stamp now, £1.10 no, or something? It's, it's a lot of money. I don't think many people know, but if I was going to do that, I wouldn't be faking stamps. I'd be faking banknotes. Oh, they do what? that as well. <laughs> what do <laughs> a, 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 a fake stamp when you could do yeah. a £20 note or a £50 yeah. note? Yeah, most well, definitely. Well, because they are so expensive, I think. I mean, I've had letters without stamps on them, actually. Mm. Is that right? You received yeah. them? That's why I like the Royal Mail. Wayne Street, London, England. England. Yeah, I've had England. It's astonishing. It's been about a year later or two. I think the fan who did it probably died years before. But, uh, but nobody you know. can tell the difference with these stamps. So the MP for South Thanet, Craig McKinley, he bought some and found out that they were... Is this one yeah. behind you? Well, I'll tell you that something. Is I, I, that is... Uh, no, that's a real deal, I've got to say. Because they're yeah. huge. Yeah. You think people would notice. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's a very uh, benevolent and dignified uh, portrait of the king, and I'm delighted to say it is fully authentic. Uh, but there you go. So there you go. We're going to have a stay of execution for the Royal Mail. But moving on. There is trouble in paradise, folks. EU members have reacted angrily to a new migration pact as Poland and Hungary reject a one-size-fits-all diktat from Brussels. Leaders in Hungary and Poland have said no, nine, non, niet <laughs> to new legislation, which would see every European country take a huge share of migrants. Interesting, countries tired of being pushed around by an unaccountable undemocratic bloc. Mm. I've got a novel solution. Bear with me on this. Poland and Hungary should get out of the European Union. That's right, they could be sovereign, have their own currency. Imagine that. Mm. Stop paying huge amounts of money every month for membership. They could even control their own borders. Crazy mm. idea, I know. It'll never catch on. Meanwhile, the United Kingdom, which we were told by Project Fear, would basically have entered insolvency at this point, with British people deciding which of their offspring to eat first to survive, appears to be thriving. That's right, news today that the British economy is roaring back to life with healthy growth, 
demonstrating that the recession we suffered was shorter than a night out with Mary Berry, especially compared to the Eurozone and Germany, who have languished in the red. So I've got a great idea. Why don't brilliant countries like Poland and Hungary and any of our other European friends leave the EU and join a brand new bloc, a brand new organisation which I'm calling the British Union. That's right, the BU, where there is no BS. A union which stands for free trade, democracy, sovereignty and strong borders. Yes, this British Union could grow and grow and become, I don't know, an empire. Yeah, I like the sound of that. And I'm sure it's got good historic precedent. <laughs> What do you think about that, Alex Dyke? The British <laughs> Union. I think people would join. Well, it's a nice idea, but I can't see it happening. But I'm glad that these, uh, the, you know, Poland and Hungary are standing up to Brussels. Mm. And we did it, of course, but I don't know if we're any the better for it. I think leaving the EU is a bit like having an expensive car loan. And you're paying £800 <laughs> a month, and you know once you've paid that car off, you're going to be richer. You end up paying the car loan off, and you think, uh, two or three months later, I don't feel any better off. Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. I've gained nothing, really. Yeah. No bang for my buck. Um, Wayne, what do you think? Uh, the British Union, I think it could be very popular. Well, I'm interested in it, quite frankly. You <laughs> well, know. you probably like it. it. It sounds like a nightclub, doesn't it? Really? Well, yes, yes, quite, yes. I wouldn't mind <laughs> starting something very again. Very good dancing in the British Union. Oh, the way, I'd be the choreographer. <laughs> the British Union choreographer, number one. That's but, it. But, I mean, I'll tell you something, though. Just making a serious point, mm. I, I voted Remain, but I accepted the result of Brexit and I thought, let's get on with it and let's make a success of it. Yes. I don't think that the disaster has happened, Wayne Slee. No. I know people have had trouble with the passage of goods or whatever, but yes. if you look at the economic numbers, we're doing pretty well. Yeah, and uh, quite frankly, where the boat people are concerned and all that sort of thing, mm. I mean, we're not doing that well. I mean, we've, we, we let people in, we don't take their fingerprints, we don't take mm. a passport. Two nights later, they've all disappeared and they're wandering around Britain without any identification and things like that. So I don't blame Poland and the other countries, you know, standing up for themselves and making their own laws about it. The only thing I do think was good about being with the Commonwealth was the fact that um, a lot a lot of us, you know, in our trade used to get bullied a lot, you know, in theatre and other worlds. And now, you know, you're not allowed to be. And that was thanks to the European community coming in and making a law. And we have harassment clauses now mm. year after year, but then sometimes they take those too far. You well, know. well, indeed, you, you mentioned you, you meant the EU, not the Commonwealth, but yes, I have to no, take, the EU. take your yes, point. Sorry. Uh, yeah. No, no, it's all, all good. And, and Suzanne Evans, the, the bottom line is that uh, I think the British Union would be very attractive. It's what the European Union was supposed to be dating back to the 1970s. Yeah, well, everyone seems to want to come to Britain, so why not expand? <laughs> yes, yeah. you know, if we can't cope with the imports, let's export it. What a good you, idea. You, you're, you're, you're in Shropshire, you've got space. We got a bit of space. We <laughs> <laughs> got a bit of space. Um, but we're no, not we're not doing badly, are we? We're not doing the too badly. Hasn't I mean, I think no. people are overplaying this economic recovery bit. It was only mm. one, 0.1% increase in GDP in yeah. February. It wasn't yeah. exactly boost, booming, booming back. But as you say, we are definitely doing better than Germany, which is really stuck in the doldrums, yeah. mostly because of their high energy prices and yeah. being too reliant on on Russia for their for their gas. And but, the green lobby who uh, the green uh, lobby, forced them course. to decarbonise. Yeah, yes. yeah. And I think that is it's interesting, isn't it? Because this week, of course, we've had this ruling from Switzerland yes. that um, Switzerland has got... I know Switzerland isn't in the EU, but it's the European uh, Convention on Human Rights, so it's all linked to the Council of Europe, mm, etc. So um, this ruling that you've got to do more to combat climate change because otherwise people aren't going to live as long. I mean, what a load of nonsense. Oh, this is like a court, living longer a court than ever telling a government what policies to have. Telling a government what to do. But also this week, we've had the Treasury, a leaked document coming out of the Treasury, telling drug companies not to make so many drugs to help net zero. Well, if those Swiss... How, what, how, what, how are they going to survive without all those drugs? Exactly. I mean, the whole net zero, the whole the whole kind of spider's web of net zero, European Union, you know, all this stuff, the World Economic Forum, it's like a... I'm sounding like a mad conspiracy theorist now, but it is Give it six months and it will all be it true. Will, <laughs> it's like got its tentacles into everything and national governments now come yeah. down the bottom of the pile when it comes to democracy. And I think that's a terrible shame and that has got to be stopped. And that's part the most reason why I voted Brexit. Government hasn't made the most of it, but that is why I did it. Now, Alex Dyke always says the most outrageous things during the break. <laughs> and in the last break, <laughs> you said... Well, you said something about Brexit because you voted for it, but 
You've got a twist. Tell me more. Yes. When, when we sat around the table uh, with, with my grown-up children and they all voted to uh, remain, mm -hmm. my wife and I... We wanted to get out. We wanted Britain to go back to the you way to, it do was. Do you want to get out of the house because you don't like your children? <laughs> no. no, no, no. We wanted to, we wanted Britain to go back to how it was in the 70s with British Leyland. And yeah. Yeah. actually, maybe that wasn't such a good <laughs> idea. Um, yeah. But we voted to get out, and I regret it. Mm. Really? So if you could vote, if you, you had your time again, would you vote Remain next I'd time? I'd vote Remain. Why? But why would you do that? Because... We got out. At least we got a chance. It's just that our government hasn't had taken the taken up the reins and hasn't run with it properly. If we had a government that was prepared to do that, it would be amazing. Well, if yes, maybe. I just the thing is, we all went into it blind. We all oh, went no, we into didn't. it blind. I don't think we went into it blind I at did. all. You went into it blind. Mm. Did you not listen to me on the television and the radio and Nigel Farage <laughs> talking about it? All I the did, time? and I and, and I was so impressed with with, with, with Nigel talking it, about it. It's Suzanne Evans' fault that you voted Brexit because she's so bloody persuasive, isn't yeah. she? Yeah, very. I'll be yeah. honest with you. Very persuasive. No, but not as persuasive as uh, Susie.Evans69 on Tinder. But <laughs> it's getting there. I'd like to meet her. I think the Sorry, thing... I've not been focused on tonight's tips. show. I've been staring at my phone. <laughs> I, I think the thing is that now we're retracted with, um, we're restricted with travel more mm. and things like that. It just mm. isn't what I, I wanted. That's really interesting. Mm. Do you think there are many of you? Do you think you're. Yes, a... I yeah. do. Yeah, I, think... I think if we did it again, it might be different. Alex Dyke has got buyer's remorse uh, after the break. He'll be discussing why he regrets working for the BBC and who to blame him. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, next up, the Royal Navy goes woke and an astonishing story of an underhand cosmetic surgeon and he's been interfering with me. See you in two. Ooh. <laughs> Martin Daubney, weekdays from 3 p.m. This new hate crime bill on women's issues, you think this is the least funny April Fool's joke in history? Yeah, although the Scottish government and the Scottish police do seem to be trying to make a bit of a joke of it when, you know, their campaign Hate Hurts is fronted by a hate monster who's a sort of cuddly, bright red, uh, Muppet-style thing. And some of the things that Humza Yousaf said about it were from a, a soft play centre over the weekend. But yeah, it's really not a joke. It's not actually clever lawyers who know the wording of the law, who enforce the law. It's the police. And the police have basically not been trained on this at all. There's a two-hour online training course they're meant to have done, and lots of them haven't already done it. And we know from the way that the police have been talking about it that they're wildly overstretching what it might actually be to be, in particular, abusive, which is one of the words in the new law, and specifically on the issue of transgender identity, to claim that just noticing the fact that there are two sexes and that sex can't change is meant to be hateful. That you know, even after years of trying to study it, I can't understand why people hold this belief. But it's part and parcel of a pattern of legal measures that the Scottish government has either introduced or has sought to introduce. So it tried to introduce gender self-ID, but that was overruled by Westminster because it was out of the power of the devolved government. It's still attempting to bring in a conversion therapy law, which sounds nice but isn't nice. It actually criminalises proper ethical treatment of gender-confused youngsters. Uh, they're trying to say that uh, men who have certificates saying that their women count as women for a particular measure to do with public boards and then this uh, hate crime law which tries to make it really difficult for someone to talk in a factual reality based clear understandable way about all these measures it all adds up to a sort of an authoritarian attempt to deny the fact that human beings are mammals and come in two sexes and that recognizing that matters for women's rights especially I'm Patrick Christie's. Every weeknight from nine, I bring you two hours of unmissable, explosive debate and headline-grabbing interviews. What impact has that had? We got death threats and the bomb threat and so on. Our job is to do what's in the best interests of our country. You made well, my I'm argument so... for me. My guests and I tackle the issues that really matter with a sharp take on every story. I'm hearing up and down the country that was a beginning, not an end. Patrick Christie's tonight from 9 p.m. only on GB News, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, every Sunday at 9.30 when I'll be interviewing the key players in British politics and taking them to task. And this report basically says that he's not fit to stand trial. With an upcoming election looming over Westminster, now is the time for clear, honest answers. I agree. And that's precisely what I'll get. Is he indecisive? 
incompetent? That's the Camilla Tomini Show at 9.30 every Sunday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's election channel. Things have sunk to a new low in our armed forces, with white pilots being discriminated against in the RAF. With a health crisis, which means that many Brits are too overweight to fight, and with politically correct box ticking in the MOD, the only winners of which is the enemy. But what about this beauty which emerged this week? Royal Navy recruits will no longer be required to prove they can swim in order to join up. That's right, Royal Navy and swimmers. Uh, previously, people had to pass a 30-minute swim test. Of course, that was in the past when the world made sense, when we had rules in place so that if, God forbid, a ship were to sink, the crew could actually survive. What's next? You don't need to run if you join the army. Perhaps you don't need to see to be a pilot. That's good news for Stevie Wonder if the music career doesn't work out. Yes, I'm warming to this idea of lowering standards. Maybe Formula One could require you not to have a proper driving licence, just a provisional driving licence. MasterChef will accept beans on toast. Miss World doesn't require you to be a miss. <laughs> oh. Wait a minute. Sorry, I think, I think that ship has passed. <laughs> yes, this Royal Navy story proves that our armed forces are sunk. Woke Britain wouldn't win a game of tiddlywinks, let alone another world war. I think Private Fraser from Dad's Army put it best all those years ago. We're doomed. <laughs> Don't be quiet, Fraser. We're entombed. Entombed. Yeah. Reacting to this disastrous story, Suzanne Evans, Alex Dyke and Wayne Sleep. There you go, Wayne Sleep. I mean, we're in trouble, aren't we? Yeah, well... Sailors that can't swim? Well, is it because they haven't got enough people signing up? Think? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what it is. It's, yeah. uh, I think, an act of desperation. Yeah, it seems like it to me. Yeah. Well, recruitment I, numbers are so low. Yeah, well, I just re yeah, and I just read up a, a thing about this before we came, um, that the first guy to circumnavigate the world couldn't swim either. But a couple of years later, he went missing at sea. <laughs> <laughs> well, it comes to the best of us. Yes, exactly. I mean, I do think that, uh, Suzanne Evans, it's a shocking story. I worry about our armed forces. I think this is a cultural problem and we're never going to win a war again. Well, I do, I do think the cultural element is an issue and definitely I think the armed forces have been focusing on the wrong things when it comes to recruitment. But I have to say, I'm going to play a bit of devil's advocate here, if I may, Suzanne Mark. Evans, you haven't gone woke, have you? No, uh -huh. I'm not going to go woke. But um, do they really need to be able to swim on those big ships? I mean, they don't, you know, you go on a massive cruise ship, exactly. they don't make sure you can swim. No. Don't they have lifeboats? Is it too much to ask? I mean, boats? they are sailors, they have a proximity to the sea. They do, and also, to be fair, I think what they're saying is you don't have to be able to swim when you join, but you have to be able to swim to pass out, as it were, whatever they do. In the yeah, movie. but there was also yeah. talk, do you remember that story of a few weeks ago, and the, the military were going to loosen security checks oh, in order dreadful. to help help recruitment yeah. as well? I mean, that was And totally... have people from overseas in order to tick diversity yeah, boxes. Yeah, that was, a, that was, a, that was yeah. a ridiculous thing. I mean, I think that was in a different league to this, basically. If the Royal Navy can teach people to swim, then that's absolutely fine. But you obviously can't teach a potential terrorist to actually love the country that he's going to potentially blow up. Uh, Alex, can you swim? If so, I'm going to make you Rear Admiral right now. I can swim because <laughs> I live on the Isle of Wight. Well, that, that helps. It's an oh. island, so you, you want Otherwise, to... Otherwise, a... you wouldn't be here, would you? No, it took me ages to get over today. <laughs> I, when I called you a Rear Admiral, I wasn't being rude. <laughs> Family show. Behave yourself, Wayne. <laughs> no, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, if you want to join the Navy, it's got to be a vocation, hasn't it? So if you can't even swim, what's the point in joining the Navy? And you say about going on a cruise, there's a, a big difference between having a, a mini break of four days away uh, on, a, a, on a liner that goes to Tenerife and comes back. There's a big difference between that and actually being in the Navy. Yeah, but they don't jump off, you know. No. Well, they might have to. <laughs> they might. And they have all like these it. things, facility in place. Now you get in the lifeboat and it's all covered in. And you don't even get out to see the sea. Well, you know, it's it's all the state of the art. And I doubt whether by the time you cross, you know, an aircraft carrier from one end to the other, you probably I'm just thinking, you know done I your time. How many and of those very brave men who went off over to Normandy and D-Day could actually swim. Yeah. This. I bet there were some that couldn't. You know. Of course not. That's a good point. A lot of fishermen can't swim. Yeah, there they you put go. them in the boats anyway, and those yeah. tiny little boats, and sent them over. And I bet some of those migrants that come over can't swim either, but they don't seem to care, do they? Uh, seems not, such is their desire to be in the UK. Uh, listen, bad news for a top doctor who's in hot water 
having given a patient Botox injections in return for sexual favours. Well, let me tell mm. you, this guy's been pilloried in the press, but I'm going to defend him. He's a really brilliant mm. physician. In fact, he's my doctor, and I went to see him earlier today. Here's the proof. <laughs> I can't wait to see this. <laughs> I think you'll agree, a drastic improvement. Is that you? <laughs> now, let me tell you, he's a very sensitive and caring man. OK, <laughs> folks, speaking of which, next up... The one and only Patrick Christie's. <laughs> Patrick, what have you got for us tonight? Yeah, a bumper day of news to round off the week, Mark. Great show, by the way. Um, Islamic clerics in Britain have been praising the Taliban. The Trojan horse is well and truly here. Angela Rayner surely has to go. I've got damning tweets that prove Keir Starmer is a hypocrite. I go to Portland, a resident there, angry that people on the Bibby Stockholm barge are getting a load of luxuries that locals can't access. New revelations that Meghan Markle is blocking Harry from contacting William, and I clash with a man suing the government for not doing enough to tackle climate change. It's all go. The world's gone mad. Patrick Christie's is up next. Patrick, I'll give you the number of that doctor. He works wonders, let me tell you. <laughs> uh, listen, folks, very briefly, uh, do you think that, uh, Alex, do you think it was naughty of that doctor or do you think uh, he's given the Botox, you it know? Was in, it was you want something in return? It, well, that was inappropriate, isn't it? You can't be doing business like that, particularly if you're a doctor because you're, you're well-respected. There you go. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Let me say none of you require plastic surgery. Thanks oh, to hello. all of my brilliant uh, <laughs> Friday A-team, uh, particularly Suzanne for coming all the way from Shropshire today at the last minute. We'll see you all very soon. Uh, this weekend on Mark Dolan tonight, O.J. Simpson's lawyer, a Titanic survivor's relative, and we'll be asking, is Labour now too right-wing? <laughs> Honestly, you couldn't make it up. Plus, my big opinion, the Take It 10. Mark meets the big story and much more. Of course, my top pundits and all the papers. That's right, it's Mark Dolan tonight from 9 o'clock. The Big Patrick is next. warm feeling inside from boxed boilers sponsors of weather on gb news good evening here's your latest gb news weather update from the met office showers for many of us this weekend but towards the southeast something a little bit drier and that's because we have high pressure dominating over the near continent further north though a frontal system is pushing its way through and that's going to bring some further outbreaks of rain across some parts of scotland into northern england as we go through the night also some strong gusty winds and a few showers towards the northwest of scotland but elsewhere largely dry as we go through the early hours of saturday morning and some clear skies but despite these temperatures not dropping a huge amount a touch cooler than last night, but a relatively mild start on Saturday nonetheless. First thing, there could be some murkiness, some low cloud perhaps around English Channel coastal parts, but otherwise, particularly towards the southeast, it's going to be a largely fine day. Decent amount of sunshine, a bit more cloud and some rain across northern and western parts of England and Wales. Nothing heavy here. The heaviest downpours likely across parts of Scotland could be some gusty winds here too. Temperatures will be down a nudge compared to today, but still a little bit above average for the time of year. Into Sunday, and it is going to be a fresher day for all of us. There will be plenty of showers piling in across parts of Northern Ireland and particularly Scotland. Some heavy, some thundery, could be some hail mixed in. Further south and east across the bulk of England and Wales, it's actually looking like a largely dry day with some decent sunshine. More showers to come as we go through Monday and to Tuesday, but it is going to be noticeably fresher than it has been of late. Bye-bye. Looks like things are heating up. Boxed boilers. Sponsors of weather on GB News. Variety Cruises have been sailing since 1942, and thanks to them, you could set sail in 2025. You have the chance to win a seven-night small boat cruise for two worth £10,000. With your flights, meals, drinks and excursions included, you can choose from any one of their 2025 Greek adventures and find your home at sea. You'll also win an incredible £10,000 in tax-free cash that you can use to make this summer spectacular. We'll also treat you to these luxury travel gifts. For another chance to win a prize worth over £20,000, text PRIZE to 63232. Text costs £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB04, PO Box 8690, Derby DE1 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on the 26th of April. Full terms and privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if listening or watching on demand. Good luck. 
2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. In the GB Newsroom, we bring you the news as it happens. With our team of dedicated journalists across the UK, GB News brings you accurate reporting of the day's topical agenda. When the news breaks, wherever and whenever it's happening, we'll be there. This is GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel.